Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Well, good morning, good morning, and God bless you. Good morning, Elder and Sister Dorset. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Polk. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Shy. Good morning, Sister Turner. God bless you, Sister Banks. Good morning, Sister Monica. God bless you. Mika, God bless you. Reese. God bless you. Rock Church. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Eleanor. God bless you, Dr. Harrison. God bless you, DJ Forgiven. Good morning, Sister Pinckney. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, little Bruce Lee. Good morning, um, D. Seth's mom. God bless you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Coleman. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Crystal. God bless you. Good morning, Alicia Smithers Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Minister and Mother Morris. God bless you. Good morning, Elder and Sister Comfort. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Williams. God bless you, your family, and all the saints of United Refuge. Good morning. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, your family, and all the saints of Trinidad, Tobago. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry, and your family. Good morning, Elder and Sister Adams. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry, and your family. Good morning, Sister Kathy. God bless you, Brother Butler, and your family. Good morning, Sister Pedlar. Good morning, Sister Roseford. Good morning, Kimberly. Continuing to pray for your strength and God's grace in your life and for your family. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Mother Street. Good morning, Minister and Sister Morris. God bless you. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you, Brother Aaron and your family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Robin. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Walker. Good morning, Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson. God bless you and Brother Irvin. Good morning, Brother Dudley. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Scott. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop Alde, Lady Alde, and all the saints of the Allegheny Diocese. God bless you. Good morning, Jeannie. God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to thank God for his manifestation, for God doing what God does. And what God does is he answers prayer. When we pray, when we seek his face, when we turn to him in need and in supplication and in contrition, God answers. Yes, he does. God answers. And I'm so grateful today for everything that the Lord has done. I'm so thankful for, to know that the, pray, the power of prayer and to know that prayer does indeed work. As always, if you have a prayer, 
prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right into the chat or you can direct message Pastor R. Pastor Reginald Davis, I'm sorry, or Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it right there in the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And to everybody that is on the conference call, everybody on YouTube or anybody can text in your prayer request to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. 5358. Text in your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them. And we are joining our faith to your faith in the expectation that God is going to work miracles, signs, and wonders. And for that, we are indeed grateful. Come and go with me now to the closing verses of the 139th Psalm. Psalm 139, and we're going to read verse 19 through the conclusion of this psalm, Psalm of David, Psalm of David. Verse 19, surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God, depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. I want to continue and conclude this psalm, Lord, you know me, Lord, you know me. We have been walking through this psalm for, this is I believe the fourth day of this psalm, of examining the several key aspects of God, his omniscience in knowing everything about David, his omnipresence in being with David in every situation and in every scenario, and his omnipotence, his power in creating and making David, forming him and developing him inside and out. Now, as this psalm concludes, David um, shares his loyalty and his fidelity to God. You know, there is a pattern, proclivity among Christians now of divided loyalties. They love God, but they love other things as much, if not more, than they love God. How do we really know that we love God? We say it, we lift our hands in worship, we utter it in our conversations, we talk about it in our testimonies, but what is the demonstration that a person loves God? What is a demonstration? How do we understand that somebody truly loves the Lord? It's more than their dance. It's more than their public worship. It's more than their praise or something that they do to um, demonstrate it. It is in the choices that we make. Your choices have so much to do with your um real emotions because we choose based upon what we think and based upon what we feel. If a man loves his wife, he's coming home every night. I'll say that again. If a man loves his wife, he's coming home every night. He's not looking for a one night stand. He's not looking for another hookup or a side chick. And so you know that man loves his wife. Yes, he ought to say it. 
Yes, he ought to do things romantic and gestures to reveal his love, but you're going to know it by his choices because we make choices every day. And when a person loves God, their choices reflect their love for God. Because if I'm choosing things to compete with God, do I really love him? If I'm choosing things that challenge my fidelity to God, do I really love him? Because if I love him, my love is reflected in the choices I make concerning God. Now, David deals with this concerning God's enemies. And, you know, uh, it's interesting that sometimes your enemies become friends. And they become allies in order to attack you or to attack someone that they have a common interest in their destruction. But David looks at this and says, Lord, surely that will slay the wicked. There's a judgment coming to the wicked. There's a judgment coming to the unrighteous. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. He wants no connection with the wicked. Now, I know people talk about the fact that Christians judge other people and Christians have a bias towards others or Christians, for some reason, dislike people that don't share Christian values. And that's really not true because we're admonished in the scripture to love everybody. We're admonished in the scripture to love people into a relationship with God. But there are some people that are just wicked. They have turned their hearts, their minds, their perceptions, everything about them. They have turned away from God. How do you deal with people that want no part of God? And there are some people in your life, not that we should condemn anybody. That's not our job. That's God's job to bring, bring final judgment. There, but there are some people that you can't connect with because they're wicked. And in their wickedness, they will corrupt even the best believer. Trust and believe there are some people out there that no matter how kind and nice you might try to be and no matter how you're trying to win them, they don't want to be won. They have predisposed themselves that they will be lost. They have cursed God in their heart. They have cursed God with their behavior. They have cursed God with their attitudes and their choices. And they're the ones that David is saying, depart from me. I don't want to be connected with anybody that's bloody and wicked. Anybody that refuses to even acknowledge the existence of God. I can love you, but I have to love you from afar because you know what the Bible says? Evil communication corrupts good manner. There are some people that no matter how saved you are, if you dwell with them, if you coexist with them, if you are in, engaged with them, they are going to corrupt your spirit. So David says, depart from me. Get away from me. Move away from me. Why? For they speak against thee wickedly. David is talking not about what they're doing to him. David is talking about their attitude towards God. What upset David, if you go back and read the story of David and Goliath, what upset David was not per se the fact that the Philistines were trying to fight Israel. It was the disrespect and the disregard that the Philistines had against God. He said, he said, how can we just sit here and allow these people to challenge our God, to allow these heathens to stand against God by standing against us? He was angry about that. That's what he said. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason for us to stand up to these enemies of God? Because they're challenging God. They're disregarding God. They're disrespecting God. And how can we just sit here and do nothing? And you know what? Sometimes the church is too passive in our stand, in our positioning, in our articulation. We want everybody to like us and love us. And I came to tell you, everybody's not going to like us. Everybody's not going to love us. We can reach out with all that we have, but we need to do it in the understanding that there are some people that hate God and they hate everything that we stand for, everything that we represent, everything that is a part of our faith. They hate it. They hate it and they hate God. And that's what brings this to what might be a controversial text in verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. 
He's saying, I hate those that hate God. He's talking about the wicked. He's talking about the demonic forces. He's talking about people that are controlled and have given themselves over to demonic influence. He says, don't I hate them? I hate them because they hate you. I hate them because they disregard you. I hate them because they don't love and honor you. And it's not the hatred that will form murder, but it is the hatred that says, I don't want to be connected with them because he says, I hate them with a perfect hatred. There, there's no neutrality. And this is important because there tends to be in among the church, a neutrality um, about godliness and holiness and what is right and what is wrong. I, I see things now that I thought I would never see, that we almost have a placating attitude to those that perform wicked acts, that we almost have a placating attitude. And once again, we're trying to win everybody with the love of Jesus Christ. But there are those that have pretty much told the Lord, I don't want any part of you. And those are the people from which we have to separate. If they're not trying to know God, if they're not trying to connect with God, why are we engaging, indulging, and immersing ourselves in their lifestyles? We know what they do. We know how they act. We know what they think. We have heard what they said. And their words tell us they have no love for God. Their words tell us they have no regard for the scripture. Their words and their actions tell us that they don't care anything about what God has said. But yet, we're, and, and, and we're not trying to get close to them, believe it or not, to win them to Christ. We're getting close to them to indulge in their presence. We've got some friends that perhaps we need to separate from. Not because we think we're holier than them, but because their behavior will eventually corrupt us. Their behavior will eventually corrupt us. Evil communication corrupts good manner. The Bible says, come ye out from among them and be ye separate. Hallelujah. Be ye separate. I understand people say, well, the church just wants to judge people. No, there are just some lifestyles that are not compatible with our faith. There are just some behaviors that are not compatible with what the scripture says. And those are the things that we have to separate ourselves from. Because you know what? The more we indulge and the more we connect, we develop a tolerance for the behavior. And then we develop a justification for the behavior. And when then we develop a justification for the actions and the deeds. And suddenly in our minds, it's no longer sin. It's no longer ungodliness. And if I could be very honest, that's why the church is inundated with so many alternative behaviors and lifestyles and attitudes and actions and deeds because we have accepted things that we should not accept. Everybody that wants to come to Christ should be accepted. Everybody that wants to serve God should be received, no matter where they are in the journey. But when people are bent, I mean, and there's a phrase called hell bent. When people are hell bent to do what they want to do, then you have to say, you know what? As much as I might like you, as much as I might love you, I have to separate myself from this behavior because guess what? It's going to corrupt me and it's going to corrupt the body and it's going to corrupt other people. Evil communication corrupts good manner. That's the word. That's the word. The Bible says, pass not, turn from it, pass not by it, turn from it, pass away. Some things we cannot connect with because their deeds, their choices say that they hate God. David closes, finally, as I close, and says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Just don't look at my deeds, know my heart. Just don't look at my actions, know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Know my thoughts. Because sometimes we behave, but we're thinking other things in our behavior. Yeah, we're behaving. We're doing all the right things, but our thoughts have become corrupted. And David is praying to the Lord to say, try me and know my thoughts. And verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me. I just don't hate the wicked. I don't want to be like the wicked. I don't want to indulge 
in the behavior of the wicked. So Lord, see if there be any wicked way. I know we don't pray this anymore, but we used to pray, Lord, search my heart. Hallelujah. Search my mind. Search my spirit. And if there's anything in me that is not like you, Lord, take it out. Take it out, God. Whatever is corrupt, whatever is ungodly, whatever does not reflect the values of God, take it out of me. So I can be right. My grandmother, my father's mother used to sing a song. Search me, Lord. Shine the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you and thank God for the word. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you. I honor you, God, for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. Jesus, you've been so good to us. Lord, better to any of us than you could be, than we could be to ourselves. You have helped us. You have kept us. You have strengthened us in so many ways. And God, we're thankful today. Thankful for last night's rest and the fact that you awakened us this morning in our right mind. We were able to get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, Lord, from all over the world. I thank you today for the morning prayer family. I thank you for everybody, oh my God, that is joining this prayer, Lord God, from everywhere. And Lord, whether they've come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or the conference call, God, I'm praying, Lord, that you would bless this room right now. Lord, flood this prayer room with your anointing and your power and your grace and your mercy. And God, minister today to every heart and mind and soul. God, we're praying today that you remember the Edwards family, the Myers family. Remember Stacy, oh God, the Butler families and the grandchildren in the name of Jesus. Remember my God, sister Edwards and God make a way in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying my God for wiping tears ministries in India. God, we're praying hallelujah for the Diamond family, the Lewis family. We're praying, oh God, for that young lady miracle. We're praying for Latasia. We're praying for Stefan. We're praying for Velvet and Sean. We're praying for Bradley. We're praying for Deacon Lewis this morning. We're praying for Terrence and Manessa Greer. We're praying for Jamal and Dakasha and the Greer family. We're praying for pa Sister Pam Johnson. We're praying for Donna Johnson. We're praying for Mother Rogers, for Sister Carolyn Lawson. We're praying, my God, for the Refuge Temple of Columbia. We're praying for Albara and Naim L. We're praying for Charles McCall and family, for Rory Sharp, for Rosa Gray, for Isaiah Porter, for Porter, oh God, and the Ross family. We're praying for Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson. We're praying for Irvin. We're praying for Mother Pittman today. We're praying for Sister Sheila Reed. God, step in in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying, my God, for Stacy and Trayvon. We're praying for Sister Seneca Austin. We're praying, my God, for Sister Lisa Kinchin today. We're lifting up, my God, Bishop and Mother Joseph, Bishop and Lady Alday, Bishop and Mother Wright, Bishop and Lady Wilkins, Bishop and Lady Cousins, Bishop and Lady Darby. We're praying, my God, for Bishop and Mother Smith. We're praying for Bishop and Lady Davenport. We're praying for Bishop Clifton Staten, Bishop Sylvester Reed, Apostle and Lady Keith, Apostle and Lady Parsons, Apostle and Lady May, Apostle and Mother Jackson today, Apostle and Mother Clark. We're praying for Micah Cobb Jr., for Kelly. We're praying for Mike Cobb Jr. We're praying for Rebecca and Mac. We're praying for the Cathedral of Deliverance Church of God. We're praying for Nathan and Lady Milton. We're praying, my God, for the Wells family, the Scott family, the Williams family, the Watson family, the Carruthers family, the Jones family, the Mingo family. 
We're praying, my God, for Sister Cynthia Cheek. We're praying for Stephanie Rickenbacker, for Ruby Rickenbacker. Lord, for every name on the prayer list, every name in the chat, every name sent by text, a messenger, or email. God, every unspoken request. We're lifting up, oh God, everybody today. Lord, save. Hey, Shandiyadarabo, Siataye. Save, God, save to the utmost. Lord, bring people out of sin. Cause them to come to repentance. Cause them, my God, to, oh God, repent of their sins and to be born of the water and of the spirit. God, I'm praying for backsliders, those that have strayed, those that have drifted, those who are wandering, my God, outside of the ark of safety. Lord, like the good shepherd that you are, Lord, pursue them and bring them back into the fold. Don't allow them to be lost. Don't allow them oh God, to be lost, but God, deliver them now. And I pray for the broken, the burdened, the downcast, the discouraged, the depressed, today, that God, you would minister to their needs right now, that you would bring them, oh my God, to a place of deliverance, Lord, to a place of wholeness right now, in the name of Jesus Christ today, God, I pray for the sick everywhere, Lord, I lift up everybody that's suffering in their bodies today, I pray for Mother Lillian Sharp, I pray for Charity, hallelujah, Stroman, I pray for Deacon Ganey this morning, I pray for those suffering from back issues, from kidney issues, from heart issues. My God, whatever the condition, we're praying for healing. I'm praying for Sister Connie Newsom. I'm praying for Sister Cynthia Jackson Perry. I'm praying for Mother Celestine Peters. I'm praying for Gail's cousin today. I'm lifting up Bishop Keith Young. I'm praying for Leroy Cole. I'm praying for Miracle Destiny. I'm praying for Sister Josephine Gibson. Lord, I'm praying because I know that you're a healer and that you're able to touch today. I'm praying my God that you remember Martina Hankerson, remember Irene, remember Jonathan, remember my God Trudy D Drawn and her son, remember Elaine Scott, remember Elder Tony Lemon today, remember Deacon Arnold Riley, Sister Alif Powell, remember my God Valerie Stewart, remember Sister Kathleen Murphy Jackson, remember Tammy, remember Sister Beverly McNair, remember Willie Barnes today, remember Justice, remember Katrina Wilson Brown today. Remember Stacy Watson's grandmother. Remember Antonia. Remember Mother Gladys Capers today. Remember Cheney Adams Wilkerson. God, remember Willie Barnes. Remember Valerie Stewart. Jimmy Jamison. Remember Sylvia Matthews' daughter. Remember Micaiah. Remember my God, Soretta. Remember Clarissa. Remember Tanya. Remember Riley today. Lord, I pray for Minister Perkins. I pray my God for Daniel and Xavier. I pray, God, that you remember Deacon Adams this morning. Deacon and Mother Wilson, Deacon and Sister Harrison, Brother Phil Solomon today. I pray, my God, that you remember, oh God, Elder Toll and Elder Dokes today. I pray that you remember Mother Virgie DuBose, Mother Mary Williams, Mother Perry today, Mother Lloyd, Mother Meadows this morning, and touch with your healing grace. Remember, my God, Missionary Janet Davis, Missionary Joyce Domingo, Missionary Gail Hardy, Missionary Marlene Roseman. My God, remember in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, M Missionary Janet. Jesse Brisbane. Remember my God, Missionary Hodges. Remember Sister Denise McLean, Mother Elizabeth Wilson, Brother Carl today, Deacon James Grant, Brother Philip Grant today. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston right now. Remember my God, Bishop and Mother D. Remember Apostle and Mother Keith today in the name of Jesus. Remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Bishop Early Dillett today. God, remember Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Mother Close today. I pray for Mother Coleman, for Sister Shakaya Polk. Lord, we lift up, my God, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop Richard Johnson, Bishop Clennell Williams, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Bishop Larry, hallelujah, Arnold today, Bishop Stephen Harper, Bishop Brian Williams, Bishop William Jenkins, remember Bishop Johnny Davis. We pray for Lady J. We pray for Lady Kathy Forehand, Lady Barbara Vincent, Lady Deborah Carter, Lady Williams, Lady Pamela Davenport today, Mother Stokes. God, remember, oh God, Apostle Herbert Evers, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams. Oh God, remember in the name of Jesus, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. Remember Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod. Remember Mother Garland today. Remember Dr. Haywood, Sister Haywood, Dr. Haywood's mother. Lord, I pray for healing today. My God, that you remember in the name of Jesus, Mother Jill and Mother Pride. Remember Elder and Mother Dugan. Remember Elder and Mother Murray today. Remember my God, Brother and Mother Chan. 
Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead, remember my God, Lady Staten, remember in the name of Jesus, Minister Carr, Lord, I pray for healing, for, oh God, for Elder Tyson and Elder Smith, I pray for healing for Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff today, Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today, remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess, I pray for Marlette this morning, I pray for Maurice today, I pray for Dennis and Tony and Kimberly, I pray for Chris, I pray for Cynthia today, in the name of Jesus, I pray God that you remember, oh God, Mother Jackson, remember Apostle Moultrie, in the name of Jesus Christ, remember, my God, in your precious name, Elder Rose today, Lord, everybody, everywhere, Apostle Mario Davis today, God touch and heal, God walk into every hospital, every nursing home, rehab center, walk my God, even into hospice there, you are a healer, and touched by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, we pray today for the grieving everywhere, everywhere, God, people have lost loved ones, but we lift them up to you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for Minister Jamie Carr and his family, for, oh God, for Sister Janelle Rousen and her family, for Mother Sally Carr, my God, for Bishop Henry Davenport and his family, for Sister Cheryl Wilson, her sisters and the family, for Sister Kimberly Clark, my God, and the Foster family. We pray, my God, for Mamie Michelle Harrison. We pray for the Meadows family today in the loss of Brother Sam. We pray for the Williams family. We pray for Pastor Robert Corbett's family. We pray for the Rucker family. We pray for Alice Cross and family, for Angela Carr and family. We pray for Greater Refuge Temple Usher's Board. God, we pray for Tamara Powell and family, for the Dunlap family, the Smith family, the Wilson family. God, we lift up, oh God, Reverend Thomas Johnson Jr.'s family. We pray, my God, for Dr. Haywood and family, for the Simmons family, the Gatson family, the Murphy family, the Jones family, the Ca Cassidy Johnson's family. We pray for the David family, the Randolph family, the Morning family. We pray for Charles Brody and family, for Hilda and the grandchildren, for the Carey family, for Bishop Daniel Spellman and his family. God, everybody that's lost loved ones, we lift up today, Mother Walker and Mother Moya. We pray, my God, for Jaleesa, for Jackie today. We pray for Phoenicia and Whitney. We pray for Takesha. We pray for Jerry today and their families. We lift up, my God, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Charles Cedric, Mother Close, and the family. We pray, God, that you would remember Hallelujah. Oh God, Dr. Carter and the family. Apostle Phil Shekinah and the family. We pray today, God, for the Quarles family, for Mother Harrell and the family, for Mother Grant and the family today. We pray for the Groover family, the Kramer family, the Hargrove family, the Blunt family. We pray for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. We pray, my God, that you remember the Meadows family, the Moyer family, God, the Perkins family, the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mom and her sisters, the White family. Anita, oh God, in the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. God, we pray today that you remember the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Newkirk family, the Ned family, the Green family. God, we pray that you remember hallelujah, oh God, Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Remember the Nunn family, the Umstead family. Remember Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family. My God, remember in the name of Jesus, Ashiananamasataye, Remember, my God, oh God, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Ways, the Middletons, the Taylors. God, remember, my God, the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Bulldrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family. God, remember, hallelujah, the Taylors, the Phillips, the Josephs. God, I pray that you remember the hallelujah, oh God, the Davis is the day, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors. Remember, Remember, my God, hallelujah, the Austins, the Harbisons. Remember the Adams and the Austin family. Every grieving widow, every grieving widow were every child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, remember them now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray today that you remember, oh God, the body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. My God, remember, hallelujah, bishops and elders, mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, the young people of the church. Remember musicians, singers, and songs 
promise. God, remember your church. Help us to love what you love. Help us to hate what you hate, God, that we might be found blameless. My God, before you. God, I pray for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray, my God, that you remember school employees and students everywhere. Remember during public schools. God, I pray today that you remember everybody that works. God, cover them, keep them, and protect them. Everybody that needs a job. My God, make a provision and create an opportunity. And Lord, remember everybody on a fixed income. God, make a way, make provision, and open doors in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, look on this troubled, perplexed world. God, everywhere there's trouble, there's violence, there's war. But Lord, you remain the bomb in Gilead. You remain the great physician. So God, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from unrighteousness. Heal the land, my God, in the name of Jesus, from hatred and jealousy and violence. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world. Hey, and the salt of the earth. God, help us today, Lord, to be your people. Keep us, protect us, guide us. And as you do all of this, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, help me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord right now. Everybody, everybody on this line, help me to bless the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, his grace. Help me bless the Lord. Help me bless the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Help me to bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. My God and his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Search me, Lord, and know my heart. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Hallelujah. I just don't want to walk around deceiving myself because, you know, self-deception is the worst kind of deception. And that's the notion that everything is all right with me when I know I've got problems. That's a self-deception. Hallelujah. And it can lead to destruction. Hallelujah. But Lord, search me, show me, help me to know what I am and who I am and what I ought to do. God, search me and know my heart. Try me. Hallelujah. Try me and know. Hallelujah. Try me and know. Hallelujah. My heart so that you can show me myself so I can repent and make things right. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your morning is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep sharing the number, keep coming and stay with us in prayer. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud and Spotify. Spotify. All of it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want to thank everybody that seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And we thank God for them and we thank God for you. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give on Online. Our website is www.refuge temple in as in North C as in Carolina.com. Refuge temple nc.com, and you can give on the donate page. You can also give with the GiveLify app. Just simply type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church, and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign capital O N E capital R E F U G E one refuge, one refuge, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving. I want to ask everybody as we approach Founders Day, which is May 3rd and 4th, to make a gift. Founders Day is sponsored by the International Board of Bishops, of which I am the chairman. And we have a goal of $20,000 so that we can benefit education, scholarships, hallelujah, supporting our schools and just being a blessing to the educational pursuits of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I need your help. So if you would just send a gift and make sure it says Founders Day because we're forwarding it on as we're receiving it to the bishop's um, treasury so that 
it can be a part of the Founders Day celebration. You can also travel with us if you want to go to um, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, or Jamaica. We're going in the months of June and July. You can sign up on my Facebook page. There's a place to sign up. You click the link, you sign up there. They'll give you the information. You don't need any money today. You just simply need to sign up and then begin to look for your plane reservation so you can fly, all right? And then when you arrive in those sites, you will pay for your hotel expenses, all right? But we're just asking you to come and go with us. It's gonna bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Look, I love this morning prayer family. And I thank God for each of you that joins us every day and literally people all over the world are being blessed because we are praying together. So please keep coming to pray and please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God might keep us and sustain us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord share his intimate knowledge of you with you. The Lord share what he knows about us with us. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.